Hello, guys and gals. This will be the best poems ever. A collection of poetry's greatest voices edited by Edric S. Mesmer. And it'll be part three. That's there, so I know which video this is at a glance. For when I upload it. Uh, I think we we're on page 51. If I can just find that in this book. Ah. We just read... And e just read... Reading. Read. Easter Wings by George Herbert, and we are to The Road Less Traveled by Robert Frost, which is a brilliant poem, one that I'm very abundantly aware of. Um, two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveler long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, in leaves no step had trodden back. Oh, I kept the first for the... Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads... On, on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere aged and age hence, ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that, that has made all the difference. That was The Road Less Traveled by Robert Frost. Now, The Triple Fool by John Done. I believe it's pronounced done. Um, I am two fools, I know, for loving and for saying so, in whining poetry. But where's the wise man? And would, would not be I if she would not deny that as the earth's inward narrow crooked lanes do purge sea waters fretful salt away, I thought if I could draw my pains through rhyme's vexation, I, I should them allay. Grief brought to numbers cannot be so fierce, for he tames it that fetters it in verse. But, but when I had, when I have done so, some man his art and voice to show, doth set and sing my pain, and by delighting many, freeze again. Grief which verse did restrain. To love and grief tribute to verse belongs, but not for such as pl as pleases when tis res when tis when tis read. Both are increased by such songs. For both their triumphs so are published, and I, which were two fools, do so grow three, who are a little wise, the best fools be. That was the Triple Fools, The Triple Fool by John Donne. Now um, we are to Remembrance by Emily Bronte. Cold in the earth, and the deep snow piled above thee, far, far removed, cold in the dreary grave, have I forgot my only love to love thee, severed at last by time's all severing wave. Now, when alone, do my thoughts no longer hover over the mountains? on that northern shore, resting their wings where heath and, f and fern leaves cover that noble heart forever, evermore. Cold in the earth, you fifteen wild Decembers, oh, and fifteen wild Decembers, from those brown hills have melted into spring. Faithful indeed is the spirit that remembers after such years of change and suffering. Sweet love of youth, forgive if I forget thee, while the world's tide is bearing me along, other desires and darker hopes beset me, hopes which obscure but cannot do thee wrong. No later light has lightened up my heaven, no second morn has ever shone for me. That is Remembrance by Emily Bronte. I believe that, nope, that isn't all of it, sorry. All my life, bliss from thy dear life was given. All my life, bliss 
is in the grave with thee. But when the days of golden dreams have perished, and even despair was powerless to destroy, then did I learn how existence could be cherished, strengthened and fed without the aid of joy. Um, then did I check the tears of useless passion, weaned my young soul from yearning after thine, sternly denying, sternly denied its burning wish to hasten down to that tomb already more than mine. And even yet I dare not let it languish, dare not indulge in memory's rapturous pain. Once drinking deep in that d divinest anguish, how can I seek the empty world again? Now, now we're done with um, Remembrance by Emily Bronte. I needed to remember that that poem was actually two pages. This is called The Bean Eaters. Now I'm going to check. It is one page. Okay. The Bean Eaters by Gwendolyn Brooks. They eat beans, mostly the, this old yellow pear. Dinner is a casual affair. Plain chipware on a plain and creek creaking wood, ten flatware. Two who are mostly good, two who have lived their day, but keep on putting on their clothes and putting things away, and remembering, remembering the, the twinklings and twinges as they lean over the beans in their rented back room that is full of beads and receipts and dolls and, clo and cloths, tobacco crumbs, vases, and fringes. That is The Bean Eaters by Gwendolyn Brooks. This is 13 Ways of Looking at a Blackbird by Wallace Stevens. 1. Among 20, snow, um, among 20 snowy mountains, the only moving thing was the eye of the blackbird. 2. I was of three minds, like a tree, in which there are three blackbirds. 3. The blackbird whirled in the autumn winds. It was small. It was a small part of the pantomime. 4. A man and a woman are one. A man and a woman and a blackbird are one. 5. I do not know which to prefer, the beauty of in inflections or the beauty of innuendos, the blackbird whistling, or just after. 6. Icicles fill the long window with barbaric glass. The shadow of the blackbird crossed it to and fro. The mood traced in the shadow an indecipherable cause. 7. O thin men of Haddam, why do you imagine golden birds? Do you not see how the blackbird walks around the feet of the women about you? 8. I know noble accents and lucid inescapable rhymes, no rhythms, but I know too that the blackbird is involved in what I know. 9. When the blackbird flew out of sight, it marked the edge of one of, of many circles. 10. Okay. At the sight of blackbirds flying in a, in a green light, even the, the bods of euphemy Euphony would cry out sharply. 11. He rode over Connecticut in a glass coach. Once a fear pierced him in, in that he mistook the shadow of his equipage for blackbirds. 12. The river is moving. The, the blackbird must be flying. 13. It was evening all afternoon. It was snowing, and it was going to snow. The blackbird sat in the cedar limbs. That was something about black blackbirds. Thirteen Ways of Looking at a Blackbird by Wallace Stevens. This is The Wood Spurge by um, Dante Gabrielle Rossetti. The wind flapped loose, the wind was still, shaken out dead from tree and hill. I had walked on, on at the wind's will. I sat now, for the wind was still. Between my knees my forehead was, my lips drawn in, and not, alas, 
said not alas. My hair was over in the grass. My naked ears heard the day pass. My eyes wide open had had the run of some ten weeds to fix upon. Among those few out of the sun, the wood spurge flowered three cups in one. From the perfect grief there need not be wisdom or even memory. One thing then learnt remain remains to me. The wood spurge has a cup of three. That was The Wood Spurge by Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Now this is storytelling by Barbara Guest. Introduce pavement. Old-fashioned people in clothes. Passage to friendship. Wave bye-bye. Details, momentum, firefly. Idly unfolds. Dark lights, etc. Separately form. In different combinations. Just tears. Rhythm, upswing, collision with serpent. Repeat and repeat moonlight as suspense moonlight. So it's like a play. I like that. Delight and Disorder by Robert Herrick. A sweet disorder in the dress kindles and clothes a wantonness. A lawn about the shoulders thrown into fine distraction, an erring lace which here and there enthralls the crimson stom stomacher, a cuff neglect neglectful and thereby ribbons to flow confusedly, a winning wave deserving note in the temptuous pet petticoat, a careless shoelace, a careless shoestring rather, in whose tie I see a wild civility. Do not bewitch me, then, when art is too precise in every part. That is Delight and Disorder by Robert Herrick. Who Has Seen the Wind by... Oh, here's another Rossetti. This one is Christina Georgina Rossetti. Who has seen the wind? Neither I nor you. But when the leaves hang trembling... The wind is passing through. Who has seen the wind? Neither you nor I. But when the trees bow down their heads, the wind is passing by. And that is Who Has Seen the Wind by Christina Georgina Rossetti. This one is called Travel by Edna St. Vincent Millay. The railroad track is miles away, and the day is loud with voices speaking. Yet there isn't a train goes by all day. But I hear its whistle shrieking. All night there isn't a train goes by, though the night is still for sleep and dreaming. But I see the cinders red on the sky, and hear its engine steaming. My heart is warm with the friends I make, and, and better friends I'll not be knowing. Yet there isn't a train I wouldn't take, no matter where it's going. That is Travel by Edna St. Vincent Millay. I think that's This is called The Doubt of Future Foes by Elizabeth I. The doubt of future foes exiles my present joy, and wit me warns to shun such sh such snares as threaten mine. Annoy. For falsehood now doth flow, and subject faith doth ebb, which would not be if reason ruled or wisdom weaved the web. But clouds of toys un untried do cloak aspiring minds, which turn to rain of late repent by course of changed winds. The top hope supposed the root of Ruth will be. The fruitless all their grasped guiles, as shortly ye shall see. The dazzling eyes with pride, with great ambition bl blinds, shall be unsealed by worthy weights, whose foresight falsehoods find. The daughter of debate, that eke discord doth so, shall reap no gain, where former rule 
hath taught still peace to grow. No foreign banish white shall anchor in this port. Oh, in this port. Our realm is brooks, no strangers force. Let them elsewhere resort. Our, our rusty sword with rest shall first first his edge employ to pull to pull the tops that seek such change and gape for joy. That was uh, The Doubt of Future Foes by Elizabeth I. Now we have Tenebris by Angelina Weld Grimke. There is a tree by day that that at night has a shadow uh, a hand huge and black, with fingers long and black, all through the dark, against the white man's house, and the little wor and the little wind, the black hand plucks and plucks at the bricks. The bricks are the color of blood and very small. Is it a black hand, or is it a shadow? That was Tenebris by Angelina Weld Grimke. Okay, uh, do not go gently into that good night. Let's go to sleep again. Okay, there we go. By Dylan Thomas. Do not go gently into the into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. The wise men at their end. No dark, no dark is right, because their words have forked no lightning. They do not go gently into that good night. Good men, the last wave by, crying how bright, their frail deeds might have danced in the green bay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight, and learned too late, they grieve it on its way. Do not go gently into that good night. Grave, man, grave men near death who see with blinding sight, blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay, rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there on the, on the, on the sad height, curse, bless me now with your fierce tears. I pray, do not go gently into the good, into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. That is, do not go gently into the good night by Dylan Thomas. Now we are ready for Sonnet 43 by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight. For the end of being and ideal grace, I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood fa childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to, I seem to lose. With my lost saints, I I love thee with the breath, with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life, and if God cho choose, I shall but love thee better after death. That is Sonnet 43 by Elizabeth Bar Barrett Browning. Okay, looks like we don't have very many left. We only have like three left. We're making good time. Uh, this is called Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold. Ugh, I'm change my position again because ugh. there, I'm losing circulation in my legs, seeing Indian style. Okay, here we go. Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold. The sea is calm tonight. The tide is full. The moon lies fair upon the straits, on the French coast. The light gleams and is gone. The cliffs of England stand, glimmering and vast out in the tranquil bay. Ah, uh, come to the window, sweet is the night air, only for the long line of spray, only from the long line of spray, where the sea meets the moon, 
blanched land. Listen, you hear, the grating roar of pebbles which the waves draw back and fling. And they're at the return up the high strand. Begin and cease, and then again begin. With tremulous cadence, slow, and bring the eternal note of sadness in. Sophocles, long ago, heard it on the Aegean, and it brought into his mind the turbid ebb and flow of human misery. We find also in the sound a thought, hearing it by this distant northern sea. The sea of faith was once, too, at the full and round earth's shore. Lay like the folds of a bright of a bright girdle furled. But now I only hear its melancholy long withdrawing roar retreating to the beach of the night wind down the vast edges drear and naked shingles of the world. All love let us be true to one another for the world which seems to lie before us like the land of dreams, so various, so beautiful, so new, hath really neither joy, nor love, nor light, nor certitude, nor peace, nor help for pain. And we are here as on a darkling plain, swept with confused alarms and struggle and flight, where ignorant armies clash by might. That was Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold. And we have a really short poem here called I May, I Might, I Must by Mary, Marianne Moore. If you will tell me why the fin appears impassable, I then will tell you why I think that I can get across, get across it if I try. That is, I May, I Might, I Must by Mar Marianne Moore. And last, we have Poets to Come by Walt Whitman. Poets to come, orators, singers, musicians to come, not today is to justify me and, and answer what I am for. But you, a new brood, native, athletic, continental, greater than before, known. Arouse, for you must justify me. I myself but write one or two indicative words for the future. I but advance a moment only to, to wheel and hurry back in the darkness i'm a man who saunters who sauntering along without fully stopping turns a casual look upon you and then averts his face leaving it to you to prove and define it expecting the main things from you that was post to come by walt, by walt whitman i believe this is all the permissions and i'm probably not going to read them but i will scroll the thing over these Okay. 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 Now this page. And here's some more. Here on the back page. And that was The Best Poems Ever, a collection of poetry. This is part three. And all those poems were really, really good. If you like this content, then make sure that you subscribe first. Like the poem. I mean, like this, you know, if you like the poems. And check out my channel for other content. Um, also, make sure you ring the bell so that you know when I upload. 
as always, all the information that you'll need to know will be in the description. And with that being said, thanks for watching everyone and have a great day.